Hey guys, DJ Shorty here from Shorty's Complete DJ Method on Groove3.com. And in this video, I'm going to give you a quick walkthrough of all the updated features on the brand new Newmark NV2 Serato DJ controller. So the first thing you notice when you pull it out of the box are all the new graphics that they added to the controller. And these are just little graphic accents that help you see things in darker environments or give you little intuitive reminders on what things do. So you'll see there's some graphic accents here on the pitch controls and then right here behind the pads. It's also on the front and the back panels, which are just cool graphic accents and on the screens here. But then you'll also notice on the high low pass filters, there's some graphic accents here so you can see, you know, how much of the filter you're applying. And then there's other accents such as this search right here, which is in red. And this is, remember you can search with the jog wheel if you press shift. So now it just indicates that with the graphics. So now if I press shift right here and I search through, you can see I'm searching through super fast through the track. Rather than doing it gradually like that where it only seeks just a short amount, if you wanna do a quick one, remember press shift and you can go through super quick through the track. And that just reminds you that that's there. Another thing you'll notice with the graphics is that they changed the graphics on the platter, which I really like actually. They look like little records instead of the silver that they had before. And they're less prone to fingerprints, which is pretty cool. Another really cool graphic element they added are the grid lines on the actual audio tracks right here on the screens. So before it was just a sound wave and you would like look at the different colors of the sound wave to know where the beats fell. Well, now you actually have the grid lines of the beat grid right here on the track. So it makes it super easy to visualize where the beats are in your songs. Now, the biggest upgrade that they added to the new NV controller are the navigation controls right here. They've changed a lot of the functions and made it more intuitive and easier to use. So the first one here is the select load knob. So right here, you can still scroll through your tracks right here, but now you can actually load a track just by pressing the knob. So let's do that. So now it just loads it super easy right there in the software. Now, if you remember the older version of the controller, the load button was up here. They've now changed the functionality to add a track to the prepare panel on the left deck or the right deck, depending on which deck you're pressing the prep button on. So if I press this button right here, it now loaded it into the prepare panel. Now we didn't have the prepare panel open in the software just yet, but if you wanna see that, all you gotta do is hit shift and hit this prep button. And here you can see in the software, now the prepare panel is displayed. Now, if you wanna see the prepare panel on the actual screen on the controller, you can just use the forward button, which is right below it and scroll through the different panels. So right there, now we have the prepare panel available on the screen. Now you notice, and this is a really cool feature I like, is that it just hangs there for just a second and then it will go back to the original panel that you had it on, whether you have it on the first display view or the second display view. So we had it on display view number two where we have the sound wave super big. So it just went right back there, which I actually really like because then you don't have to navigate through just to get back there, it just knows and it goes right back. Now, remember another way you can scroll through the different views on the screen right here is using the display view button. On the new controller, it's located right up here with this top button. And this used to be the deck button. So now it's the display view button. So now if I hit it and scroll through, I can scroll through the different display views on the screen right here. Now, if I press shift and the D view button, it will access the column feature. And this is a really cool new feature that they added and it allows you to change what you see in this third column, which gives you access now to five columns instead of the original three. So if I hit this and then change this here, you can see I'm scrolling through BPM, key, and time, or the length of the track. So you can choose what you see at any given time just by pressing shift and the D view button, which changes the third column. The button below that is range and key lock. That hasn't changed at all. And then the next button is the deck button. So this button used to be the tap button. And now you can change between the decks on the left side. So I'm gonna go right here in the software and just switch it to four decks just so you can see. Now we have all four decks. So if I wanna change the deck on the left side, I just hit the deck button and now it changes. And you can see it here changing in the software from two to four. And the same thing changes right here. So let's go to this view. If I change it to deck four, you'll see there's no track loaded because I have no track loaded in the software. The next button that's changed is the button right below that. And its primary function is to change the software view. So that's S view. So if I just click this, now it's gonna change the views in the software. 
Now, another really cool feature that they added is the ability to sort all five columns that you have access to here on the screen. So let's go back to the column view and you'll see right here on these buttons in red, we have key, BPM, album, artist, and song. So all the red text with the plus next to it is a sortable feature. So if I press shift and the S view button that says plus key next to it, it will now sort by the key. So now you'll see right here on the screen, all of the tracks are now sorted by key. The same thing goes for BPM. So if I hit shift and this quant BPM button, it accesses the plus BPM part and it's now sorting by BPM. However, I only see the key. So if I wanna see the actual BPM, I would hit shift and the D view column button. And now I can see right here, it's all sorted by BPM. And right now it's slow to fast, but if I hit it again, it will go from fast to slow. You can also sort it by album. So if I hit shift and this forward plus album button right here, it's now going to sort the tracks by the album name alphabetically. And same for this button right here, the back plus artist, if you hit shift. Now I'm sorting by artist. And last we have song and it's sorted by song. So let's go back to this side for a second. Right below the S view plus key button, we also have the quantize plus BPM. So if you press shift and this button, remember it sorts your tracks by BPM, but if you just hit it without pressing shift, it will activate the quantize feature in Serato. So if I hit this button right here, and then you look over here, now quantize is set to on in the software. And if I hit it again, it turns it off. So that makes Quantize super accessible just right here on the controller. You can just hit it once and bam, it's in Quantize mode. Now this is a global feature in the software. However, the button is only on the left deck. On the right deck, we have the beat jump feature. So instead of activating Quantize, you can activate beat jump just by clicking this button right here. So now if I click that, if you look in the software, it activates and deactivates the beat jump controls. So you can see that right here. Now the beat jump controls are controllable right here on these pads. So let me go into the display view number two so we can see the beat really large. And then if I hit the auto loop button, now you'll see that the buttons light up blue and red. This is telling me that I can control the beat jump feature with these buttons. If beat jump is set to off, you'll see that the auto loop buttons all turn blue. So that's just in plain auto loop mode. So let's go back to beat jump mode. You can see right here that these bottom four buttons have changed to red, and that's telling me that I can control the beat jump controls. So if I press these two outer buttons right here, it allows me to beat jump through the track. So if I press the right one, it's going to go forward, and we see that right here on the screen, and then backwards, same thing, it's jumping through. Now if I wanna change the amount that the beat jumps, then I would use these two middle buttons right here, and I can change, and you can see in the software, it's scrolling through the different increments of the beat. So we have all the way down to 1 32nds of a beat, and then you can go all the way up to 32 beats. Once you get to the end, you'll notice that the button grays out, and that means that it can't go any further. So if I hit this one, once it gets to the end, now it's on 1 32nds of a beat, and it changes to gray. And then over here on the right side, there's just been a few other minor changes. There's the forward and back buttons. We went through the forward button a second ago, but uh, this is how you go forward through the panels on the display right here and back through them, just like that. Uh, so that button was all up here on the older controller and now they've split it and they put back down here and forward right here. And the last button right here just allows you to scroll through the different panels in the software, such as the record, the effects, and the sampler. Now, another really cool feature that was actually available on the older controller, and now they've started promoting it more on this newer controller, is that the jog wheels are touch capacitive. So they remember and sense how you use it and then sort of learn and then adjust themselves based on how you use it. So whether you are heavy handed and you press really hard or if you're light or how fast or slow you typically go, they sort of remember how you use them. So the more you use it, whether you're scratching or rewinding or boarding, however you're touching it, 
they will remember that and become more customized to your personal touch, which I think is really cool. So the last feature I wanna show you guys is something that they tweaked, which is the pads right here. They tweaked the responsiveness of the pads, which I think is really cool. On the previous controller, I had to hit the pads a lot harder than I have to do on these pads, and they respond super quick. So just to give you an example. I'm barely touching it, and it's responding right away. So that's it. That's all the new features on the Newmark NV MK2 Serato DJ controller. And remember, it still has all the awesome features it had before on the previous controller that made it so dope, such as the touch sensitive knobs. We still have the touch effects and all the other great features. They just upgraded it and made it that much better. I'm DJ Shorty from Shorty's Complete DJ Method, and I'll see you in the next video.